Welcome to the Tiger Interview Series. In this episode, we have Cameron Ginger of Propel Hitting. He is one of the main accounts I follow on Instagram for breaking down hitters' swings. In this episode, we're going to give you a plan on how to hit more baseballs more effectively with on-plane efficiency. We also dive into how one of my players plays both tennis, golf, and cricket. Will it affect his baseball swing? Find out Cameron's response in this episode. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Tiger Interview Series. I have a good friend, Cameron Ginger, back in the saddle, um, and we are going to be talking about bat path. We're going to be talking about on plane. And the reason that we're talking about this is I got a YouTube comment on one of my blast motion videos that I did about a year ago. And I was thinking about how I wanted to respond. And finally, I came up with the conclusion is like, I'm just going to ask Cameron to come on because that's like, for me, he's like the expert on video analysis. So um Cameron, uh, do a quick intro if they haven't seen our interview. Um, if you guys want to, if you guys love this interview that we do, what I'm doing with Cameron, we have um, episode 17, how I use video to increase my hitters power numbers. That is a full length, uh, deep dive, just general outlook of how um, video analysis has changed me as an instructor and in helping my players um, reach the next level. So Cameron, go ahead and give a, a brief int intro, elevator pitch. What's up, everybody? I'm Cameron Ginger. Um, I help, I, I, I've got a, a page called Propel Hitting. Um, we're just really passionate about helping helping people and making success tangible for everyone. And so, yeah, man, we're just we're here to we're here to help and grow the game. And we really just think that um there's a lot of there's a lot of information out there that people can assimilate and um and so like you know what we're passionate about is is seeing people be able to translate that right instead of using google translate to translate you know english to spanish we want to we want to be able to we want to be able to make you know baseball translation the information into into application and into understanding so that's what we're really passionate about and so man i'm i'm glad to, that we get to talk again and i know we had a blast last time so man i'm i'm pumped about it and if you haven't followed him on Instagram, please do. Also, YouTube channel is um, he's starting to upload consistently. So go ahead and check that, check him out um, on YouTube. First question, obviously, the elephant in the room. Explain on plane, uh, being on plane, and on plane efficiency. Yeah, it's it's a great question, right? I think it's there's there's a lot of science behind it. There's a lot of breaking down of it, uh, but I think simplistically, it really is just matching the angle that the ball is entering on right so if you think about it basically so let's you know the average pitcher is over six feet right as we're talking about big leagues even 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 youngers right they're gonna like taller guys are usually pitchers right and so they're standing on elevation right the mound is supposed to be 18 inches above the plate we we all know that sometimes they're they're a little higher right to give pitchers a little bit more mm -hmm. of an advantage but they're they're 18 inches higher right so let's say you have somebody who's six foot so you have six foot, right, then standing 18 inches higher. So the ball is already coming down at a at a downward angle a little bit, right? So the on-plane um, idea, the on-plane concept is just, just to match that angle that's coming, that the ball's entering on, right? So, and, and I think the, one of the reasons for that is because, like, I just want to have, I, I want to match that, and I want to have maximize the area and the time that my bat is, in conjunction with what the ball is doing, right? Because we all know that like the T, the ball stands still front front flips, like ball's gonna be pretty much in the same same spot every single time, right? But in a game, you know, man, like they may, you know, you may have a guy, you know, in high school, you may have a guy hitting, you know, sitting 88, but then may, he may pop a 91. Well, but then the next pitch, you may pop an 84, right? And so the ability to have some variance and adaptability in the swing, um, just naturally with how we move like it's super important right so that's really all it's about right i mean like and if you look back from when we've gotten had film right guys have guys have been doing that guys have just been like you know whether it's naturally or they're trying to they're not trying to do it and it just happens like they're just matching where the ball comes and so like you know now with video analysis with you know data with you know just different things like that you're able to analyze when you get on, how long you stay on, um, and and how that how that best works, right? I mean, you have somebody like Chris Davis, the guy who plays for the Rangers. Like he's he's so deep, he almost hits the catcher's catcher's mitt every single time, right? So like now that caught that 
people have been able to exploit some things because pitchers are really good with him, right? So you have somebody that's like him that's real early in, then you have other people that don't get in as early, right? But like the whole premise is just I'm the ball's coming in here and I just want to match that. Like I saw um uh Casey Smith from out front hitting he he did one of the best he did one of the best explanations that I've ever seen. So he took a PVC pipe and he said, look, so let's say the ball's coming in at this angle. Right. Mm-hmm. So what's the best way to shoot that pipe back and a line drive? He says, is it this? No, it's going to make it do this. Is it is it under here? No, it's that. So it's it's matching that angle of the pipe. Right. So if you would attach a tail to the ball, then just at, just matching that where it is. And then just. So he used so he used the PVC pipe on path over the plate. And then the hitter had to take that path as he went there. And he was just asking okay. the hitter, so which one makes more sense, right? To match the PVC right there, right? And hit it here or hit it too far down or too far under, or underneath. Which one is going to cause it to be a line drive? And it's really just a visual of if, you know, the pitch had a tail to it, right? So it was just like like when Pitching Ninja does it, right? And has a tail and it shows you the path of it. Mm-hmm. What is the best way to just engulf that path and hit a line drive? <clears throat> and so that for me is something that I use a lot to show people hey this is all this is right like don't talk don't worry about this don't worry about words that you don't understand and you don't know and they are hot words and they're clickbait words don't worry about that right just like mm-hmm. understand that all we're trying to do is just match where the ball is coming in from that's all that's all we're trying to do that makes a lot of sense and people that are listening to the audio version when we were talking about the pvc pipe it's basically saying that the barrel um, he was Casey was saying, don't go down on top of the PVC pipe and cut that PVC pipe in half. You want to get that barrel to match on plane with that PVC pipe because what he was doing was he was using the PVC pipe as a demonstration of what the ball was doing and coming on plane. And another way to think about it too is like if you're painting, right? If you're painting a horizontal, um, a horizontal fence, right? Like you don't want to come. You want you want the path of the stroke, right, of the brush to be as as long as elongated as possible and engulfing as much of the pane of wood as possible right you don't want to come down to you don't want to just catch it a little bit you know coming down or to catch mm-hmm. a little bit too much coming up right you want that stroke of the paintbrush to be as elongated as possible same basic concept right just taking that with a ball and because it's coming down from the pitchers right because that's what that's what they teach pitchers get get on top of the baseball work down and work downhill and have high spin, right? That's 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 what they teach them to do still, right? And so that that's all the premise is. It's really just a basic of, I'm just matching. I'm just matching it. That's all it is. And people that are probably wondering like, well, this is great. How, how does on plane really make me a better hitter? And for me, it's you're more consistent. Your probability of hitting the baseball goes exponentially higher than you going down on the ball. So rule the, the two catchphrases that I hear a lot is, oh, I want to swing down on top of the ball or I want to swing up on the ball. And we had that conversation in episode 17 and we came to the conclusion is like it's old school versus new school. Also, you got to you gotta figure out who your hitter is because if he's swinging totally up, I'm going to tell him I'm, we're going down on wood. We're, we're definitely going down on wood because you are swinging way too up. Well, and it's just and that, that's what's so important about it, right? Is like giving getting it to a point where you you know as an individual as a player as a coach as a parent just understand it right and then listening to what the player or listening to what the player is saying right or or if you're a player like okay i'm thinking this and this result is happening right so now how do i make adjustments that's really all it's there for right and and i've i've just heard it said by a lot of guys that are smart people right they talk about playing matching playing doing all that it's really just to maximize your mistakes, right? To give you a greater margin to do damage, right? Because if you think about it, when you're in and out of the zone very quickly, um, you just have to be perfect, like all the time. Like if anything is off a little bit, right? If he throws, if he's normally throwing the slider at, you know, 82 and he throws it at 84, you're going to be off and you're not going to hit it well. Um, And so like, that's really just what this is about. That's why I use Chris Davis as an example, right? Again, like, not the highest average guy. Like you could, you can poke holes and find holes in this stuff. Totally can. But that dude will shoot balls down right field. Like he's a right-handed guy, and he'll shoot the ball down right field line, like by the pole. And that's just not. That's just most people can't do that on purpose. And so, 
Um, he's doing it because he makes a mistake and the guy throws 97 or he throw he normally throws 97 and then he throws 101 and he's able to still hit it and still catch it, still catch it. And so it's just, it's just a basic concept, right? Of, I just want to engulf the baseball. I want my bat traveling through the hitting area, regardless of what's going on. Right. Like, because like it, it there's going to be some guy, like there's that guy for, I can't remember his name. His last name's Chase he used to pitch for the Rangers, but like he's got a 101 mile an hour cutter. Sometimes he knows where it's going and sometimes he doesn't. But like you have to be able to like engulf that, right? And match that plane to have a chance. Like that's that's just the thing. Like it's it's so hard to hit now. And you know, um I think this conversation is good is good and important because we got to get to a place where it's just like, hey, we're just trying to match. Now, are you Chris Davis that gets in like literally almost hits the catcher in the head? You don't have to be that guy but just matching it. That's all we're trying to do. And if you think down to do that, then great. If you think up to do that, okay, great. But like what we're trying to do is just engulf the ball. That's all we're trying to do and hit through the baseball, not just to the baseball. That's one of the, that's, I think that's one of the biggest flaws about T work. And I do T work all the time, like with my guys and I did it all the time. That was my staple when I played was being on the T. But the problem is um, we often, we just out of habit, we work to that ball instead of where the ball's coming from. And so I try and make all my guys like, you know, be out front and closer to where like the ball would be coming from. Cause I know how to kind of like counteract like, okay, like now we're going to make sure that you let the ball get there and stuff. But man, it's, it's just really important. Like you, you can't just work to the ball. You have to work through the area that the ball is coming and you're going to run into the ball. And I think that's, I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions is like go straight to it. And it's like, okay, well, what if it's a cutter and you don't see it? Or what if it's a slider mm-hmm. and you don't see it, right? That, I was, there was a guy that I coached with that he was, he's 24, 25. So he was a, a junior in high school when this was going on. But we went and watched, um, gosh, I can't remember his name, but he was playing for the Rough Riders, or he was he was rehabbing with the Rough Riders, right, in Frisco down here in Texas. It's a double, their double A affiliate. And he was rehabbing, right? He had a wipeout slider, like, wipeout slider and that's about all he had at this point in his career right but like guys were just taking stupid swings right like the ball would literally end up almost outside of the the left-handed batter's box to a right-handed guy and they would swing because they 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 didn't see it and it it would had such a good tight spin um they Mm -hmm. couldn't see it well and so like with as much as people can pitchers tunnel now like we talked about that last time right release yeah. being the exact same like we've got to have a bigger margin to not be perfect and still get hits because that's really what it comes down to right a fastball up i'm i'm if you think down or you think up like you're gonna most people are gonna hit that most people are gonna hit that well right but like it's all the other stuff that that where the movement the side, side to side 100 percent. like even if it's just that much right or even if it's 89 88 to, to 90 that, that's a difference that's a difference and so it's that's all the concept is there's um a lot to unpack there because there were, i had a bunch of thoughts one of them is just in-game adoption if you're a younger coach um a younger age group coach the big thing for me is why you have to work on on plane and you don't have to work on these complicated concepts of what we're describing, which is like these wipeout sliders. The spin rate is just ridiculous. It's pretty simple. The on plane, you're only worrying about up and down and left to right. That's literally all you have to worry about on on plane efficiency. And when, and when you unpack the on plane efficiency, each on plane is completely different because it depends on the pitch when it comes in and where it is in the zone. So I think if, as a, as a coach, I would work tremendously on trying to get guys to be on plane and in the zone as long as possible. Cause then when you start talking about these ridiculous uh, 100 mile an hour cutters, it becomes a lot easier to, to understand like, okay, I got to take that the other way. hundred percent. Right. And that, that, and some, that could be something as basic as, so like when you're working with a hitter, you're working with a team, like don't let the T be at the same spot all the time, right? When you're when you're mm-hmm. there. And like that's basic, right? But like so move it down, move it up, move it back. Like Boba Shett has, you know, something that was circulating on YouTube and Instagram and all that stuff where he he put something way uncomfortable, right? So it was high and in and he said, I'm trying to just like take that ball over the second baseman's head because I'm trying to work and make sure that I'm on plane early and I can hit this ball. Right. And it happens in the game. Like he'll he'll do that. But like 
what I found successful with that when dealing with players is like, <clears throat> so a lot of times, like I was working with a guy two days ago and I moved the ball inside just to see what he did. Never worked with a kid before. And he, his, he saw it and he felt like he had to do all these different things. And so later on in the, in, in the time, like we were, we were moving them up and down. I was like, stop worrying about where the ball is. Let your eyes work with your brain. And do you really think that your, your eyes are going to let you swing over the top of this ball? Cause I moved it down the zone. No. Okay. Do you know what side bend in? He, I asked him, do you know what side bend is? He goes, no, I have no idea. Well, I was like, well, you just did it. Here's a video. Let me show you. <laughs> right. And so like, there's, that's why some of these major league guys, like they can think, they can think so simply, right. And they're like, well, I'll just do this. And it's like, no, you don't, but I'm glad that it's that simple. Keep it that simple. Right. And so yeah, like, yeah. I think that, well, and that's the art of coaching. That's the art of coaching. Cause like, because you have to like, and you're, and, you're, and people are probably wondering like, Oh, you guys are making this too complicated. And it goes back to our, our episode 17 is that you have to understand the complexity so that you're able to simplify it and know, okay, I'm not going to explain this to this hitter because that guy is completely on track. This guy is struggling with this. So I have to go a deeper dive into this part of being on plane. And I think that's where it comes that's where being the the teacher and the mentor right of and just the button pusher comes as a coach right like i believe that everybody deserves the information how that information is presented to the individual is up to the coach and that as a coach like we can't be lazy with how we bring it mm -hmm. oh this has worked the past two lessons it's like well this kid's different or you know, like this kid's in a slump and this, I've said this phrase, you know, with somebody struggling with what he's got and it's got him out. You can't do that. You can't be lazy with the presentation. Like everybody mm -hmm. deserves the information, but the presentation has to be, you know, like you've done it. Like the way I present to a CEO is way different than the way that I, that I present to people that, you know, are down in the digging the ditches. It's completely different. Right. Yep. And so like, it's the same thing, right? Cause you have people, you have kids on your teams that are going to be CEOs. And you have kids on your team that are going to be, you know, master plumbers and probably make the same amount, right? Some of those plumbers that's, make crazy money, that, right? But that, that's how, that's who I was. I was the plumber. Dude, come on, man. Hey, you're, <laughs> and you're, that, you're the and that's why man. I'm not in the show. Hey, I <laughs> that's hear why you, I'm man. not in the show. <laughs> I hear you. But like, that's what it comes down to, right? Like you've got to, that's why it's so important to understand the information, then let your brain process through it. Like, okay, that's what this person needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. Now, how do you, how do you evaluate hitters on on plane efficiency. Are you using video or using metrics? Are you just using your, your eyesight? Because again, I'm thinking to myself like, okay, we we're in this constantly. What, what is, what about a youth coach? Like how can a youth coach identify it? And I have, I have my answer, but I would like to get your answer on this. So, I mean, for me, like I'm, I'm a big eye test guy. Um, but I think that, um, I do, I back myself up, right. Cause it goes back to what, you know, I, we were talking about in, in, in episode 17, like when we're, when at driveline, when Ochart says like, you can't have an opinion, you have to back it up. Right. And that, and that really affected me when I heard that four or five years ago. And so um, I use, I use video. I use, I've got a super slow-mo app that I, I put on my phone. Uh, I've got that. And then, you know, I think using like <clears throat> any kind of sensor, right? Like some people get thrown off by that. Really it's, for me, what I use the sensor for is to make sure what I'm seeing and what I'm, what I, what I'm assimilating is correct. Right. And I think mm -hmm. just like, um, so I use all those and I, and what I do is like, I watch it, but then I go over and say, okay, like <clears throat> if this ball was off, if this speed was off just a little bit, do you think that you would have hit this ball? No, probably not. I would have capped it or I would have swung over the top of it. And so that's where, for me, when I do the evaluation process, I do, I involve them a lot, right? And then I, mean, I think something like, let's say, you know, as a youth coach or a younger coach or anything like that, like find who their favorite hitter is, right? And that, now this comes down to you as the coach studying, right? So I always say, who's your favorite hitter? I like, you know, whoever. It's like, okay, well, let's watch a video of him. Slow-mo and then wa let's watch a video of you. Okay, what are the differences? Well, he seems to be more back, and I won't even have said anything about playing, right? Like, well, he seems to be a little bit more this way, and then he catches the ball in the barrel and works through. That's what a kid said the other day. He was like nine. And I was like, that's it. Do you do that? No. Okay, well, let's work on some stuff to get you there, right? And so now mm -hmm. that's, that's variant, but, like, that's something that I've seen. Like, people have to understand it. That's the hardest thing about baseball is you can't see it. 
right? Even on video, you can't <laughs> always see it, right? That's why yep. it's so important to have somebody next to you that you trust. So I don't know. What are your thoughts? So I always use the sensor. I feel like, um, and again, it's, it's, it's kind of a disadvantage to a lot of people because sensors are still new. Um, vast majority know what they are, but they don't know what the data is. I get that. I get those uh, questions a lot. Like, what does this mean? What is this number really telling me? And I, I, I give kudos to blast motion. They're really trying to push the envelope on adoption. So they've created those different types of scores uh, that off of the 2080 scale. But I feel like that's kind of hindered people a little bit because it's kind of throwing them off in a loop. So like I constantly use on plane efficiency and then video, like I agree, it's very tough to really, like, is that really what it looks like? Is uh, it, it, it's one of those it's one of those games where you're playing with yourself and saying, but the data and the metrics and the um, wearable technology really does solidify that answer of like, okay, the, this guy's on plane efficiency is not not very good right now. Right now. And even if they're a high level, simple, simplistic dude, right? Like, hey, like let's look at yours. Like, do you think? Again, like just being able to throw those questions in there. Hey, if he, if there's if this is a cutter, is he he's tired, right? Are you going to still hit this ball with the same authority because like you don't have as much variance because you're going to be out in front, right? His 93, you're on that 93, but he's tired now and it's it, he's at 90. Are you still going to hit that with the same ferocity? Yes, you may. You're strong. You're going to get it. You're going to get a single out of it, right? There's nothing wrong with that. It's a good thing. Singles are good, mm -hmm. but like if we were on a little earlier and stayed on a little later, maybe it splits the outfielders and you can run. So like, maybe you end up on third base, right? Like a hit's a hit, take a hit, right? Like, like that's, yep. one, that, that's one thing that people think it's like, you know, on plane or this or that. It's like, well, all you want is bombs and all you want is like, no, no, no. Like, I just want to be able to, to naturally turn a single into a double or naturally turn into a ball that wouldn't line out to the second baseman to get it over his head. That's all. Well, it's a, it's the, it's the argument of like in game, like, Oh, my on plane efficiency wasn't very good, but yeah. But did you get a hit? Like, yeah, I got a hit. That's all we want, bro. That's all we want. We, if, if you, Hey, if you cap it and it ends up going into the outfield, great. We got a hit. Let's, let's call it a, let's chalk it up for a win. Now, are you hitting the ball hard? Now nah, we gotta, we gotta figure that out. But again, that's one at bat out of, I mean, 200 that you're going to take in a season. Well, and truthfully, the game isn't where you make all these like huge um, mechanical adjustments, right? Or you're, you're worried about this or you're worried about that, right? Like I, was, I, that's not where that happens. That happens in training that happens in before that happens in all that stuff. Mm -hmm. right? Like I saw, I saw a picture of, you've probably seen it too. It was on all over social media, but it was like three Dodgers. I don't, I don't remember who it was. Gavin Lux, you know, Bellinger. And I think Chris Taylor, they're all three on iPads. And the tweet was essentially like, oh, there's some, you know, old school guys just getting super frustrated about it. And I, and I just sat there and I was like, man, what what a what a narrative, right? Like being able to use the technology <laughs> to look at it real, real time, whether that's whether they were using the metrics, whether they're using blast motion, whether they were just looking at video. Like, how awesome is that to be like, wow, now I've watched my that swing eight times and now I have a better idea. Right. Like and, and I think what's important to note there. <clears throat> is you you as a youth coach you as even as a high school coach you're not going to be able to have that capacity right you may be in one of those programs that's so loaded that you have two cameras right that you can see and you can review afterwards but um i mean man it's just like that, that's where teaching what you just said is so important right like yes you're right that wasn't a great swing but take that as a positive and build with that so in two at bats you can you can hit a double right or you can hit a triple and don't get just get focused on well, all my on plan yeah you're right so like now how what what cue are you going to have to where like you can relax more and you can turn that into a double right so like that's that's the biggest thing because like if if you if you like listen to the differences of like like listen to a double a hitter <clears throat> versus a major league hitter they sound very similar but as you listen to more guys you'll hear those major league guys make adjustments pitch to pitch, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, pitch to pitch at bat to at bat and, and guys that are at the lower levels, they haven't, they haven't been able to do that yet. Right. Like I saw a clip of Tim Anderson who said, man, I got, I got, I got, I got put out on this same pitch three times. So after the game, I literally worked on it for two hours and I came back the next day and I worked on it. 
you know, and then I went over three, but I still, but then I, and then I noticed something that happened, you know, whatever, whatever. And then he hit a home run, he had a grand mm -hmm. slam. Right. So like, that's, that's the difference. And so being able to teach that, yes, that wasn't what you wanted, but good result, still did some good stuff. Take this as a positive. So in two of that, you can hit a double, right? Or you can hit whatever you can get more of what you want. And I don't, you know, I think there's a disconnect between coaches youth coaches, but especially like, you know, high school, college, there's a disconnect between that and like how, how players are now. And I think one of the ways to do that is like, well, like you gotta be a team guy and you gotta do this and you gotta do that. And it's, <clears throat> and all those things are important, but I think like bridging the gap is really important, right? Like you've got to like learn ways to like not get mad at a kid cause he wants to hit a double, right? Or he wants to hit a home run and he capped it. Yes, it was an RBI. Yes, it was all those things. Like all, all that you said, that's great stuff. But like work with them and be like, hey, like I know you want to do more because you want to be better and you want to be good. So that's still a positive. You made a mistake and you didn't have a good swing and you still got a hit. That's a period. Just take it and go. So now in two at-bats when I need you on the top of the seventh inning, um, you're going to hit a double, right? You're going to piece this dude up so well because you're going to take this as a positive and keep moving, right? Like that's why I ask my guys – I don't care what how many hits you had. I want to know how many barrels you had because barrels are going to mm -hmm. turn into hits, right? And it's like, because <clears throat> like you could have four duck farts and I don't, you know, most people aren't going to feel the same way about that as they will four barrels because four barrels is going to find, is going to help the team, right? But it's like you get four barrels and you scratch and you claw and you be a dog, right? And if that means that you got to get a duck fart to help the team win, then get a duck fart to help the team win, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. I think the big thing is just like, as a coach, you don't have six iPads and, and 78 camera angles like the Dodgers have, right? But you can teach recovery and you can teach, it's it's never about um, the plan. Everybody's got a great plan. You plan so you can replan in about 15 minutes. That's just how it works. And so like mm -hmm. the ability to teach kids how to adjust, even kids that that don't adjust well, that that is so key, right? Because some kids may be, you know, a small boat that can turn quickly, maybe like a jet ski, or some kids maybe like an aircraft carrier where they take longer, but the ability to teach them how to adjust is so important, right? It's like, yes, that's not what you, or like whatever it is, right? The ability to be like, take 30 seconds, take two minutes and grab that kid and be like, hey, this is what happened. This is how we can take it. Let's do that because I'm gonna need you again next time, next time you come up, right? And I, and I think that's, I think that is a bridge right? can be a bridge between old school and new school because it's like, because then afterwards we can talk about, yeah, I didn't feel like I was on plane as much. I didn't feel like, I, okay, now's the time to think about that. That's good, right? Now's the time to think, okay, how can I, how can I do better for tomorrow or next game or whatever it is? I always think back to like the old schools that um, if the technology was here in the 1930s, I guarantee you those guys would have been using it because again, they, they, they were competitors and they want to compete and they're trying to find an advantage and the technology gives you an advantage, whether that's video, whether that's wearable technology, whether that's wearing a whoop strap to make sure your body's more efficient. Um, I, 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 I solely believe that they would have done that. And it's always going to go into this, in these cycles where we're going to be the old school and they're like, Oh, why are they using that any, anymore? Like it's gonna be like virtual reality and stuff like that. But again, those players are going to do it because it's a huge advantage. Like when reality, that is a massive advantage that not many people, like not many high school guys are spending the money to get the Oculus and get when reality. And they would be surprised at how good they would get by literally just doing when reality every day. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. stuff is nuts, man. Like in like, it's like literally dude, you're already doing it. Like, or you have Oculus for something else or you're already playing this. Like literally it's a video game, bro. Like, yeah, you're all right you're already seeing Chris sale sliders. Like what's, what's a, what's a 17 year old kid going to have on you? Like you could probably go to perfect game and do really well, but just knowing like, Oh yeah, that's a ball. Oh, that's a strike. And just being able to guide yourself through it. That's where it starts and stops, right? Like you can have the perfect mechanical mechanics. You can have the perfect everything, but like if your timing's off and you don't see the ball, it don't matter. It doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter anything. Like it has to start there. And like, that's, uh, I don't understand why people are opposed to it. Right. And I don't have to, um, but man, like I'm just sitting here and I'm like, it's, 
it's a huge thing. It's a huge opportunity to just like mm -hmm. learn how to do that and learn how to see it and learn how to do all those things, man. It, it's exciting. I'm glad I'm, I'm excited for the people that are going to take advantage of it. When should the barrel enter the zone? Great at question. What point, what point? At what point should it enter into the zone? Yeah, I think, <clears throat> I think, um, the earlier, the better now with, with a little bit of a caveat, right? I think when teaching, um, because if I go super early, if I go super early, I'm going to drag the barrel. Exactly. Which I'm going to get, it's going to, it's going to, I'm not, I'm going to eliminate that speed. And if you think about it, speed plus mass or speed times mass equals farther distances. So you want to have the best of both worlds. Yes. So like early being like, you have to teach the body. No, you have to teach, you have to do things that convince the brain that, what the body already knows how to do. So and what I mean by that is like, so a lot of times you don't have to, you know, if, if you can teach someone sequencing, right? Stride first, back leg, let the back leg and the pelvis pull the barrel forward. Like a lot of times if, if that sequencing happens, happens, oops, sorry, um, it gets on, it gets on plane, right? So I, but I think there's a lot of like cues that you can do, you know, whether that's using pipe, some people don't like that. But for me, the only reason I do any of those hands on things is so people can understand it and feel it, right? Because like, I think a lot of times, you know, with certain people, you know, um, there's, a, there's, a, there, there's a group of hitting people that think it's, you know, to do it one way, but a lot of them that go with that, they have, they feel like they're dumping, right? Or they feel like they're always underneath the baseball, right? Or, um, <clears throat> You know, and so like, and then there's the opposite on the other end too. They always feel like they're too, and so really like, it's just those cues using the pipes, right? There's like, you know, there's a pipe, there's a drill where like you can put it underneath both armpits and like you just hold the pipe and you can. So you're, you're saying, you're saying PVC pipe? Yes, PVC pipe, right? And the only reason, again, the only reason you use PVC pipe is because you can feel it and you can move it easily, right? There's so many, there's so many different things out there that you can, that you can use for hitters that really when they go to swing they're already doing that but then a, a a six foot pvc pipe lets them feel whoa wow okay well i felt a lot of bat speed i felt a lot more bat speed there i felt a lot more whatever there so i think i mean there's that that's why there's so many drills right you can you can take a bat and put it underneath your arm right and then you know i like there's so many different things that you can do to to help that and so i think it's early but i think it's like teaching the the kid this is what we're trying to do we're not trying to get behind and lose right like and there's <clears throat> um we're getting to do a, we're getting ready to do a youtube video on this right but there's a um we're doing like a then and now with mookie and um from when he came up or when he started first playing pro ball until now and like one of the things that you can see is his like in the four, 2014 clip is his barrel starts breaking before he gets to the baseball Right. And so like, <clears throat> showing clips, showing clips to kids like, hey, like we don't want this barrel. We don't want there to, it to start looking like a door yet. Right. We want the body to take to pull the bat and we don't want that. We don't want the bat to look like a door yet. Um, <clears throat> because if you if that if that barrel gets away from you, it's going to create that that drag a little bit early. So you want that sweet like the sweet part, which is the densest part of the wood or the metal which is really hard for metal bats, especially those D Marinis. Like those things are, those things are so hot. You could literally just put it out there and it, it would, it's like a backyard baseball where you have like the mega, the mega bat and you just literally, it, 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 go, it, it goes away. <laughs> literally like out of the earth. <laughs> yes. But it, it's, it, it's, it's understanding that like, I want to keep that dense part of the wood or that metal close to my body as long as I possibly can and then being able to get it and break it out towards that towards that ball like that that's the whole if you ever heard the um the phrasing drop the hammer that's literally what it, what we're saying is like drop that dense part of the wood and that bat on top of that ball as fast as you can and I, and I think a really good way to like for people to understand it is the the cue stay on your line right so it comes from a lot of different people but like um, I, I've, I've just found that that's very successful for people to understand. It's like, you know, like if, if you're just like standing in the box, right, that, that the white line, the inside white line, just like thinking, okay, I want my bat to work on that line. Oh, that's a good point. Until I can't touch the baseball. Right. That's a really good point. That like, I've just found so much success by people finding natural plane 
by doing the sequencing correctly that you don't even always have to teach to teach the stuff, right? Like I think sometimes people do eyewash stuff, right? With some of that, some of that, some of the drills and stuff. But I'm just I add those drills in when somebody's, you know, the top hands or the bottom hands having trouble finding it or the top hands. So like, mm -hmm. but like even just even just getting and I did this I did this yesterday with a kid. Like even just like dividing up into three parts, right? Like I don't care if they're a pro guy or they're six. Stride is one, back leg is two, hands are three. Right. And just having them do like one, two, pause, and then hold the three. Right. And then like just like then you tell them to release the three. I mean, you'll be surprised because like the pelvis and the hips are pulling the bat and like yeah. they're gonna pull the bat to where the ball is because that's where the eyes are. And so like I think it's um you can get very technical about it. And I think, you know, I I, I can do both, right? And I think that the drills help, the cues help, the restraints help. But I think what it comes down to is if you get the proper sequencing, you can hand you can get a lot of the plain part, not perfectly, but naturally. And naturally is where you, where you really want it to happen, because um, then you can make tweaks really easy as opposed to well, I gotta I gotta completely sequentially and cemently teach this, and so they're they're not gonna be they're not they're gonna have drag most of the time um, in my mm -hmm. opinion. At what point should the barrel exit the zone? So I think a lot of people have seen like three, four swings, right? Um, if you're if you're on any kind of social media, so three a three, four swing would just be, um, you know, making contact and then not. So if you're dividing it up into force, right? The swing, enter, get to the ball, you know, get through the ball, and then fourth will be re return. So just get into that third quadrant. Uh, Mookie Betts is a really good person to watch with that. He does it a lot, like in. His so hold on. So let's so so let's explain that. So. Yeah, you're 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 loading and striding. The barrel, you're starting to swing, so your hands are having a forward progression. Your barrel enters the zone. That's that's one. Then barrel gets to contact. That's two. Third is you're getting th is working through, and then the fourth one is the finish where you're fully rotated. So now what Cameron's talking about is the third quadrant, which is the follow the, the through you're getting through the baseball. So Mookie Betts does the, the three fourths drill. So go ahead and explain that. Yeah. So he just, when he, when he's on deck uh, or even when he's hitting baseballs, right? So the, he, he will do the three, a three, four swings. A lot, a lot of different people do them um, as well, but it's really just, if you just imagine um, it's just, you get to contact, you work through contact and then when you you reach until you literally can't touch the baseball anymore and that's that's the exiting of the the third part the third quadrant and that's when the fourth quadrant comes in right so um <clears throat> i think that the longer that the barrel can stay on so the barrel is where all the stuff all the power and the torque is being released right that's the focus mm -hmm. point of where the exit of the the physics is going right so we want to stay we want that barrel working behind that behind that ball and with that ball as long as possible because if we make contact we make good contact and then we peel off it's almost like all the hard work we did just was for not because we're going to make good loud contact but it's going to stop right and, and one of the mm -hmm. things that like i tell my guys is that the the bat should follow the ball, right? And what I mean by that is if you let go of the bat, they should be like, if the ball was here, right? If the ball was wherever the ball was going, and then the bat, you let go of the bat and it was like doing the helicopter, they should be on the same angle, right? Because if you're wasting anything, like if you're a righty and you're wasting stuff behind you to the third base dugout, all you're doing is taking away power. And the it doesn't always show up from the, the power that you're missing if you... <clears throat> if you don't stay with the baseball, doesn't always show up from the in, from the plate to the infield. It shows up whether it gets past the outfielder or the outfielder get, catches at the track or or anything like that, right? So from so from the outfield grouse out, that's where that happens. And so like, I can remember there's a kid I worked with a couple years ago and he just was having a lot of balls, strong kid, a lot of juice, like stupid juice for a little kid. And, <clears throat> he was just having a lot of that happen because he was really good too. And he kind of went through, but he never, he never made it all the way to the, all the way to the third quadrant. And he started mm -hmm. doing that and he ended up leading his collegiate team in home runs. And like, I mean, he's every bit of five, 10, 170 pounds and not a, 
drop your shoulder, hit the ball. Like he just, I mean, I think nine of eight of his home runs or something like that were to straightaway right field. Right. So not a, not a big dude that's trying to untie his shoes when he swings. And so that third quadrant is, is really the goal and just more, just more because we don't want to waste it. I don't want to get here and then peel off. Right. I, mm-hmm. I want to get here and I, I want to get to the ball, which is good, but I want to finish through. I would argue that the finish is almost it's almost more important than getting to it because getting to it is like the studying for the test. Right. Good, important. You can do all that stuff. But if you forget a pin, it doesn't matter. Right. Like yeah. it, 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 doesn't <laughs> matter. Right. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And so you've got to be able to get you've got to be able to let all of that stuff finish because a lot of people will hit the ball in their turn. And so what I mean by that is they'll make contact with as they're rotating and their body's working around their spine, they'll make contact as they're still rotating around their spine. And they rotate off of it. They rotate off of it. And a lot, and a lot of coaches think it's you're opening up your front shoulder. It's, it's, you're literally rotating too early. A hundred percent. Right. And so like, so when you, when you're making contact with the ball and you're still like, you know, finishing that your, uh, your elbows are going to be bent. So think about all that, that you, all that stuff that you still have to push and you still have to finish. If we spin off or <clears throat> we don't work into that third quadrant, you're wasting all that. You're wasting mm-hmm. all that. So you might as well just like not extend your arms and not do anything. Right. And just kind of baby arm it. Cause that's, that's essentially what you're doing. And so I think that just like being aware of that third quadrant as a visual, um, you know, what we used to set up a, um just like a essentially like one of those covers for the infield when you're hitting fungo so it doesn't doesn't mess up the infield and we used to we did a color system and it's like hey we just like get to this third quadrant try and get to this third quadrant we would and we would you know test our guys we put it way out in front but like it's like hey like i'd rather you work out that way and then just you know let the bat go back to cinder so i think that's a, i think that's a really good way just like visuals help people um it's that it's that same thing right it can be likened to like hit the ball still be in contact with the ball three balls after the tee, right? Some some people may be familiar with that terminology, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's the whole thing. That's what the third quadrant is, is being, I would even say maybe five balls, right? Trying to be five balls off the, you know, from the plate still connected with the ball or still moving that way. And I think, so that third quadrant, so if you think about that, I mean, you're engulfing, if you're in the zone from first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, like you're, you're matching incredibly so right and that could be different right it could be a chris davis is in early or it could be a miggy that's in that's in a little bit later right but it's just he's still hitting all three quadrants and working through that's how he can hit the ball out to right field it's really it's really tough to teach that to younger guys and um one drill that we used to use a lot when i was playing was um replaced contact so basically you're closing yourself off you're hitting through the baseball, but then if you're trying to get back to contact, you can't rotate over. If you rotate too much, you're not going to be able to get back to the to the right spot. Um, another drill we used to do was the helicopter drill, where we would hit through and we'd have the helicopter it, just like Fred McGriff, the crime dog. It's fairly easy to see barrel path um, on an MLB swing, just because they're really, really good at what they do. And even though they're hitting it extremely hard and also the video quality is way better in the major leagues than what we have on our phones. How do you, how do you, how do you recognize it with your younger guys? And then like being able to do a comparison because it's not really fair when you're comparing, um, Johnny, who's nine years old to Josh Donaldson, who just hit 34 jacks in the in major league baseball than seeing a hundred mile an hour cutters. Yeah, for sure. I think, um, I think the best way to evaluate it is, you know, in the moment, let's say we're in the moment, the best way to evaluate it is, is, is with video, but then at the same time, like understanding, like, uh, so let's, let's use your example, right? Jimmy, who's nine years old versus Donaldson. Donaldson's his favorite player. Jimmy's, you know, let's say he's too steep, right? He's coming in, he's coming too steep being like, he's coming, um, he's hitting on liter on the literal top of the ball too much. <clears throat> so his barrel, his barrel's entering like more on top of his front, his shoulder, like his ear, ear, like near his ear. Like uh, Coach Ball Game always says, it's like near earwax, where he goes straight down on top, <laughs> which which is a great concept for like young guys. Like I, I love Coach Ball Game because he simplifies everything, and for for hitting purposes, like I would not teach that to like a fifteen year old. And he says the same thing. He's like, but if I have if I have a kid that has blue jeans and it's his first time hitting, like we got to get him to hit the ball. Like we're we're we're, we're talking we're talking earwax and we're going straight down to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, 
Um, so let's say, you know, like, like Jimmy has, Jimmy has that, right? So I, I can compare the video. I can take video of him. I can take it from different angles. Like I take it from like 45 degrees in front, um, side, like we're straight across and then behind. Um, <clears throat> and so then I would, I would find, um, you know, like, let's say a term that Jimmy at nine years old understands. Okay. So, you know, that's one of the things that I ask them is like, what do you want to, what do you want to get better at? Why are we here? Why are we doing this? Well, I want to hit more line drives or I want to feel more balanced or I want to feel like whatever. And then I try and incorporate that in and use that language, use their language when doing the comparison. Right. So let's say that again, like he's, Smart. he's, you know, Donaldson does this and you want to hit more line drives. Okay. So what does he do? What is he doing when he, when his swing starts, right? He gets to his ready position, just like you're at. Like, what is he doing? What's the first thing that he does? Well, he does. Well, he kind of moves this way. Okay. Now let's watch yours. Are you doing that? No, not as much. Okay. Well, let's watch. And then just like progressively, progressively build it to where like they can see the whole roadmap. Right. And I think, mm. I think as, as, as you can do that, that really just opens the line for the communication. And then they will be able to tell you, oh, I was, I was, you know, in their own language, I've, I've literally had a nine-year-old who was in blue jeans, but like, oh, I was too steep there. I'm like, gosh, that's, that makes me happy to be able to hear that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, man, I think that, I think that's where it starts. Right. And, and just younger kids look up to older guys so much. And so if you can connect mm -hmm. those dots and just like use their language, right. Or, or even if they haven't given you any language, like, what are you trying to get, what are you trying to get accomplished? Okay. There, I want them to you know, high five the back, the back of the baseball a little bit better. Okay, cool. So like, do they, they're not going to understand that. So put it in terms, right? If you got, if they play football too, put it in football terms. If they are a smart kid, put it in math terms. Like what, like same kind of thing, right? Like if, I mean, I, one of the most successful hitters I had loved math and all we did was talk about geometry and trigonometry. And I'm dumb with the math. I hate math. Right. But like, he you found the language. Yeah. hundred percent finding the language and then finding like a comparison of like, Hey, he's this, this guy's doing this too. He does it a little bit differently than you, but this, he's that same move that you're wanting. He does. So how is he getting there? Well, I'm not really sure. Okay. Well, let's dive into it. Right. Always being, always asking the why, because truthfully, um, identifying the what or being critical, like finding something that's wrong, like toddlers do that. Right. My three-year-old, my three-year-old can do that, but asking the why and then, and then building the how together that's that's where that's where it really comes from and comes down to right so that's that's how i would do it and that's how i would suggest you know other people doing it is just learning how learning the language learning that that kid's language and then understanding like this is what i'm trying to get them to do but then i'm also going to be patient and understand that they may not get it done in, the, in this hour or they may not get it in the, get it done in these 30 minutes but what are some things that like I can help them have success to where they want to come back and they want to continue to have success so we can continue to build on it. Right. And just getting people mm -hmm. to buy in that this is a process. Yep. Uh, if it was, if it, if I could give it to you in an hour, I'd be a billionaire at this point, mm -hmm. you know, like, and so it's a, it's a process. And so I think that, um, I think some, sometimes the hardest people are the parents, right. Cause they think it's, mm -hmm. it's, and not in a bad way, right. I'm a parent, like, and I, I'm, I'm going to screw stuff up like that too. Like, but, it's like there's no two swings. And so one of the things that I try and do at the end of a lesson or end of a, you know, a game or end of a practice is I have the, the those guys go back and tell their parents what they worked on. <clears throat> not my words, mm -hmm. right? I'm not, I'm not in it. I'm not, I'm not talking about it. So I'm like, you need to explain to your dad or your mom, what all that means. That's what you have to do in the learning process. So it's good to like do one, you have to identify who you trust and what resources you like. Then you have a consuming part, which is basically the lesson itself. And then you have the um, teaching part where you have to teach it to somebody else, because if you're able to teach it, you know it. And again, it's be, it's, it's being willing not to screw up. Cause like, that's what happens. Like when I first started out with lessons, I would be like, all right, so this is what we're going to do this drill. And the kid's like, what, what drill is that? And I was like, we just did this like two weeks ago, bro. Like, how, how do we not know? And I started realizing that it's my problem. I didn't tell them you have to go teach this to somebody else. You have to go explain this to somebody else. So that's a, that's a really good point. I like, I like how you're saying like, let's go talk to the parents and explain it to your mom or dad about what you learned. If they can explain it, even just basic rudimentary levels, one, it makes the parent understand. I just like, like what they're, I can trust this person a little bit more. 
And then two, like, um, you know, it like it gives them confidence that their kid can produce it, right? Because a lot of, I mean, and I'm sure you know you've seen this, other coaches have seen this. Like a lot of times, you're not the you're not the kid's first hitting instructor, pitching instructor, fielding instructor. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, you're not the first one. So you got to earn that trust a little bit. And for them to be able to come out and tell you, tell their parent three to four to five things, and then you could sit there like, okay, well, how are you going to practice that? Well, this really helped me, and this really helped me feel good here, and helped me do it. And then you mm-hmm. just get out of the way, right? So I think that's you just you just have to involve people in their own development. And that's one of the things I tell people in the, the get go. If you want somebody, if you want a to do list, if you want somebody to just tell you what to do, then let's just be done right now, and I'll give you your money back, mm-hmm. right? Whether that's a team, whether that's a, a lesson, whatever it is, it's like I'm not I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to help you learn how to do it, right? And yep. and, and that and that and that's really what it comes down to for me. So I think I think what you're saying is it's. That process, that three step process, four step process has to happen. Or or you just take you're just taking people's money. Right. And, mm-hmm. and that's and that's not that's, that's not, not what that's not good. About. That's not what people were about. I had a lesson the other day and um, this kid plays tennis, does does golf, and also plays cricket and plays baseball. So that's that's four different types of swings, right? And the mom had a really good question and I wanted, I wanted to get your take on it too. And I, and I, I answered her and she's like, so should he like stop playing cricket? Should he like stop playing golf? He, he probably shouldn't play tennis. Right. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, no, 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 no. Cause I use, I use tennis videos as well. Like there's different, there's different mechanical adjustments that they, you can make off of tennis. And I was like, I think that's going to make him a better hitter overall because again, are they, are they different swings? Yes. Mechanically there's some, there's some different, there's, there's some differences. Like I don't like it when a coach says, Oh, the golf swings exactly like the baseball swing. It's not, it's, it's definitely not. Um, tennis, ten- tennis is the same thing. But I do think that being able to handle different weights and also being able to put your body in a very dynamic situation like a golf or a, or tennis or even cricket, if you are into cricket, I think that's perfectly fine. Well, I think – so I remember the first time I picked up a cricket paddle, um, and it truly, like, it kind of helped me – it kind of helped me clean up some movements and it kind of helped me get out. Of <laughs> like, so I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big cricket believer. Um, yeah. But I think, I think it's just because so much of what we do, whether you're throwing a baseball, whether you're throwing a football, whether, you're, whether you're hitting a baseball, whether you're hitting, they're very similar movements. I think your body's, are, your body's doing a little bit, you know, different things with it. But like, I mean, think about it. Think about a, a kid that played tennis and then played baseball like that kid is going to have incredible strength in both hands the ability to do both things and their and their hand eye is going to be incredible right so like mm-hmm. I, well, even rotation rotation is going to be gosh off the charts incredible yeah like because how many how many times it, like some of those people can do insane backhands right like mm-hmm. and it's just like think about having that same movement and being able to backhand that ball and have to understand that concept it just shortens it just shortens your learning curve and i think anything that you can do to shorten the learning curve is just is just huge right and so it's like yes the golf swing's different yet they're all different right but we're they're rotating around the spine and they're trying to hit the ball square and hard and do and do what they want to do with the baseball right like just 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 don't call it the same <laughs> it's agreed just agreed. please do not call it the same because it's not so if you have a golf instructor a pro, respectfully say Sir, you are right, but it's not the same. <laughs> exactly right. It has tons of similarities, but just because stuff has similarities doesn't mean they're identicals, right? Like, and so yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's just important. I like, I would, I would love that if somebody, if like I had a kid come in and say, I play golf and tennis and cricket. I'm like, bro, we're gonna have some fun, man. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah, all, I'm all about that. I think it's yeah, great. We're, we're, we're all in. Well. It's funny how these conversations go and um, I was going to do some video work, but we're already like at 56 minutes and I don't, and I don't want to crush another 90 minute session um, because I, I, I know because the people listen, listen to it in different breaks. Like uh, I'll, I'll have someone like, Hey Spike, I love the interviews, but bro, like it takes me forever to listen to the episodes. I was like, get, get off the Joe Rogan experience. And I was like, all right, sounds good. <laughs> So, but I will, I will do, I will still do my three hour shows, but, um, Cam, I want to, I want to end it here. And if, if anyone has any questions on, um, propel hitting, please hit him up. 
I mean, he is a phenomenal dude. Like I, I, I actually had one of your videos up in my blast motion, um, uh, uh, like center and it has, it ha it's from a year ago and it's a softball girl. Hold on. I'll show it to you one second. Cause I, I, th I think you'd get a kick out of this. Do you see that? Oh yeah. The softball girl. Oh so, yeah, dude. She could break. They, this is, this is actually one of the first videos that I got from you. And the reason I got it was because it was a softball girl. And I was like, I really need to start incorporating more softball swings into my, my hitting lessons. And like, just looking at how she enters in the zone and gets out of the zone, like she just gets absolutely through it. So if you're watching this on video, you can see what we're going through. But, um, where, where, do you know where she was from or do, do you know, do you know the backstory or no? I know. I know. I don't know tons about it. I want to say, it looks, SEC, I think maybe. It looks like South Carolina. Yeah, I think I think I was gonna no, say South Carolina. Miss, Mississippi State. I see it on the railing right there, Mississippi State. But yeah, she apps, she enters in that zone like how we were talking about, and then doesn't get that drag. About that clip is like she's kind of beat a little bit, right? Like she hits yeah. it on the inside part of her front leg, right? And so like she's yeah, and I mean like she like that's a good position, right? But I think like she's she's beat a little bit, and so like that 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 just that's the antithesis, the antithesis of it, right? It's like she she's got she's beat a little bit and she's still mm -hmm. like this ball went a long way. <laughs> I saw it, yeah. I saw it, like the travel the ball it went a long way. So it's yeah it's I love it man. So there there's some like, softball girls that can freaking stroke the baseball. Yep and the and the difference is I have a baseball swing up here right side by side and this guy actually doesn't get beat and the ball went a lot farther comparable to softball and and baseball but like this this was a mammo tank and he got that ball out in front of him so like that's what he was talking about camera's talking about like she got a little little too deep onto her front side where it got into her leg where this guy catches the ball out in front of the plate on a middle pitch same pitch both the same pitches and they just crush it but that baseball clip is he's like <clears throat> he's working into that three he's working into that third quadrant like so well right there's no break yeah. he's not breaking his wrist right no and that's really what it comes down to is don't spin off like he's made contact and then he's just like he just keeps working through that third mm -hmm. quadrant and like that i guarantee you that's a significant reason why the ball like the ball was probably going to go out or have a chance but like for the ball to go as far as it did that's probably yeah, like, yeah, he's he's gonna break. Break. Oh, and you know, you know who, you know who does a really good job of that is Arenado. Arenado stays through it really well, and he doesn't, he, and he doesn't bend his front elbow. I like he doesn't bend it. It, it he literally, he, he literally gets through it. Man, like he practices that in the dugout too. If you watch him, like he's got this like little routine that he does, and it's like it's insane. I've never seen anybody stay that dedicated to staying through. But like that's why he is the way he is. You know, like so yeah, man, I love it. Cameron, share your uh, contact information, YouTube channel, Instagram. Give it, give, give the good news, and uh, guys, make sure you follow this guy. Absolutely, man. So we're just at Propo Hitting on Instagram and and YouTube. Um, we're we're getting ready to to do a bunch of bunch of cool stuff on YouTube, and um, we've got some cool content coming out. Me and the me and the other guy that that helps helps me run, helps me do some stuff. So we're we're gonna do do some stuff there. So feel free to. Go there and subscribe and, and peep all the videos. We've got a bunch of cool major league stuff too. Um, just so people can, you know, stay in one spot, right? Because I know it's been hard to it's hard to find major league swings slowed down and stuff. So we kinda of started doing that too. So yeah, we, we put some stuff out on YouTube and Instagram and that's it's we're we're just here to help make success tangible for, for everybody. Cause I think everybody deserves a shot to to be successful. So yeah, man, that that's our that's our that's our deal. And thanks again, man. I'm sure we could sit here and we could probably go over three or four hours, honestly, just, ball, <laughs> just on plane, just literally on plane efficiency. <laughs> what I'm saying, man. So I appreciate it, brother. For real. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, yeah. make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Um, we are on YouTube, obviously Rawlings Tigers. Um, while you're there, go ahead and go to propel hitting and subscribe to that as well. Make sure you hit the bell notification. Um, give us a five-star review on Apple podcasts and follow us on Spotify. Thanks guys. Talk to you soon.